lock it in place. So welcome to this pretty mental video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at all of this. So every year on TechFlow so far, we've done some sort of network upgrades to my home, which is where we are now, in the kitchen. This is no exception. We've got the Unified Dream Machine here, which is pretty much the nerdiest home router you can buy. Behind that, we've also got Ubiquiti's redundant power system, which we're gonna be installing and taking a look at. And then over on the other side, we have a plethora of access points from this 1,500 pound beast, which we're gonna put on the roof of my house house and some little baby switches and some access points for in the house. So without further ado, let's get into all these boxes. Okay guys, so I'm gonna do my best to try and explain this part by part, piece by piece, so you know what is going on. Down here, we've got three pieces of brand new hardware from Ubiquiti. Right down here, we've got what's called a UPS, a redundant power supply. So what this is gonna do, is it's actually gonna power our devices like our dream machine, which we'll get onto next, and our switch if the power goes out. It will keep these devices running, which is great because let's say we've got security cameras connected to our switch, the power goes out, our security, it's gonna keep running. Second here, like I've said, we've got the UDM Pro, or the Ubiquiti Dream Machine. That is a pretty cool name for a router, if I do say so myself, and it's a pretty cool router. We're gonna install it in this video. Above that, we've got one of Ubiquiti's PoE switches. Now, they make numerous switches, some inexpensive that don't have PoE, and some a little bit more expensive that do, like the one we've got here. Now, pretty much, basis of PoE means that you can plug things into this switch, like this wireless access, access point here, or some cameras, some CCTV cameras, and it will, as well as transfer data, power the device, which is great because one cable, you've got power and data. So via this cable here, I've plugged my laptop into this network and it's asking me to configure all of this. So I'm gonna give the UDM a name, UDM Pro. There we go, we'll go next. And now what I'm gonna do is sign into my Ubiquiti account so I can access all of this stuff from the cloud, which means, yes, I've got access to my router, switches, absolutely everything to do with Ubiquiti, no matter where I am in the world with an internet connection. So next up, the UDM Pro has taken a speed test of my internet to this house, which as you can see is 304 megabytes down and 54 megabytes up with an eight milliseconds ping. Now, the UDM needs to know this because what it's gonna do is something very clever. Because it knows the speed, it can say, ah, okay, if one device is using 300 meg, but Alex downstairs is wanting to load a 4K YouTube video on the TV or something and it's lagging, well, because the router actually knows what speeds we're getting to the house, it can go ahead and manage what devices and where the speed is going to, so not one device hogs the whole network. Does that make sense? Now, as you'll see with my previous Ubiquiti setup that's currently still running in my rack at the moment, soon to be replaced by all of this in this video, you'll see that there is a device in there called the Cloud Key. Now, what that device does is it manages all of these devices, so things like the switches and the access points, and it also manages all of the security, like all of the recording of all of the CCTV cameras. Now, the UDM Pro, or the Dream Machine, has the Cloud Key and the root built into one device. So you'll have seen me earlier in the video put a hard drive in here or an SSD. That's because all of the cameras are gonna to record to that SSD and right here is the screen where I can go ahead and choose to configure the network or go into the protect side of things. And we actually get a sneak preview here of some things that Ubiquiti are working on like some access equipment and some VoIP phones. Now, these thick cables look very, very official, and that's because they are. Essentially, over this side, we've got our normal power cables, which are powering our dream machine and our switch at the moment, but these big thick ones are connecting our switch dream machine to this redundant power source. So now, technically, if I was to pull the plug on one of these items, it should stay on. 
I have now disconnected the power from the switch, but as you can see, it stayed on, our access point is on because it's being powered by the redundant power system. So at least we know that that's all working. Okay, well, now this is all set up, I need to get it moved into my rack up there, which means taking out some of the older gear. But we're not gonna take out all of the older gear. I wanna take you guys through my house right now and show you some of the gear that I'm going to be keeping. So whilst everything is updating, this is the UAP Flex HD, the sort of pole-shaped access point which I've set up over there. As you guys know, and I'll put links to all this in the description, Ubiquiti make a plethora of access points, one of which I've already got set up in my office, but there's a problem with it. And this, what Ubiquiti have sent me, is gonna sort that. These are some faceplate covers for the Ubiquiti access points. And here is our access point, so now that should just go over there. Oh, that is so much better. <laughs> this is a tiny little PoE powered switch, which we've got, which we're gonna install later in this video, behind my desk. Now, just down here, we have another network switch from Unify. This is gonna be staying here. This is for all of the devices that are in my rack in the kitchen. And now the last piece to my already built Unify network is this 60 watt PoE switch that actually lives in my garage. Ubiquiti have sent out this, which is a little bit mental. This is called the Unify Industrial Switch, and I think it's more suited for a place like this, a garage, somewhere industrial. Whoa, look how cool this is. I didn't think this was gonna be as big as it is, and it's so heavy. Okay, full metal jacket on this. We've got a uh, Unify or Ubiquiti logo on the top there. I assume all this is for heat dissipation, and then where's all of our ports? Are they under here? Oh, look at that absolute beast. USW industrial switch. And as you guys can see, I've also turned my garage into a little bit more of a room than a garage. So Ubiquiti have also sent me a nano HD access point which can live in here and be powered by that industrial switch. So we've got Wi-Fi access out here. So with my previous network explained to you guys, it's time to take all of this new gear up to the server rack. Which, if you didn't know, is up here. Okay, so one thing I would just like to point out is that these power cables that connect the RPS to the devices like the Dream Machine and the Switch, they're absolutely massive. I don't know if my rack is gonna be deep enough for how thick these cables come out the back of this. Okay, so here we are. This is my brand new rack. I hope you guys like it. If we try and remember what it was like here before, I have my old UPS just sort of sat down here, powering everything. The whole rack itself was just a mess. I had cables terminated going into the switch. There wasn't a patch panel in sight. There was a shelf that had my NAS unit sat on it, and here in the UK, I've actually got my rack in the loft. But for this networking equipment, it can easily reach 80 degrees and still be fine, and it gets nowhere near that in a UK loft, so I'm not worried about this. Anyway, I managed to figure out where all of the cables go into my house, came down here and patched them all into this patch panel. So as you can see, well, I've got all of the cables that go to the numerous locations around the house. This little blue cable here is fiber optic that goes down to a switch that's in my cupboard. We've got the redundant power supply at the bottom, the dream machine in the middle, and then obviously the switch on the top. This looks so much better than it did before. So you can see here now, this is all booted up. These little screens just doing their thing. But now back on track, because the RPS is plugged into my UPS, if I was to power cycle this rack now, as you can see, PSU failure, but everything else is staying on. Like it's staying on, everything is still running, all of my cameras are still recording, which is the main thing really, the security. I'm not bothered about having the Wi-Fi off if there's a power outage, I just wanna keep my cameras recording. And as you can see, we're all running pretty cool at the moment. This, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Okay, so 
so it is now the next day because quite honestly we were filming all day yesterday doing the rack and everything and it just took ages. So next day now and we're going to carry on the network tour. So essentially we're now in my boiler room upstairs. This is an eight port switch from Ubiquiti. This has been here since as long as I can remember. This is where the other side of that fiber cable goes. If you remember there's a fiber cable in the rack. That feeds this switch here. Now I call this switch my smart switch because on this shelf I have things like my Philips Hue uh, hub here. I have my Somfy hub which actually controls my smart blinds and then I've actually got the Fabaro home center here which controls all of my smart plugs. I've done a video on that so I'll put a link to it and in the card there if you want to watch it. Here I have uh, a Ubiquiti access point. Now you may be thinking Alex why have you got so many access points in the house? This one has one job and one job only and that is to broadcast a wireless network that is for all of the smart lights, so all of my LifeX lights and it also has a smart network on here for things like Google Homes which run on 5 gigahertz, like things like Chromecasts for 4K streaming, different things like that. And the NAS I actually moved to up here, it's now plugged into this switch. Okay, so this is the Flex HD, a really cool looking access point. It does look kind of different. I suppose a lot of Ubiquiti's access points look different though because this one in here, the one that we're going to be replacing this one with, is called the in-wall. Now we've got one of these in my office. This used to be in the wall because it used to be on the other side of this wall, but I actually had some stuff done to this kitchen, so this is no longer fit for purpose. But this is just gonna plug in there like that, that bottom piece goes on, and then this can just sit on this counter like that. Now this access point comes with wall mounts and stuff, but for my installation, it literally just wants to sit here like that. And then this cable, you guessed it, goes off to the rack that we've just patched in up there. Okay, so this is really kind of funky. We're gonna be putting that huge antenna on my roof in a little while, but this is a brand new switch from Ubiquiti. It's gonna be my brand new office switch. Look how small this thing is. Oh, it's even smaller than I thought. Look at that. This is called the Flex Mini, and one of the reasons why I really like this is because it's powered by USB-C, or PoE in. Now obviously the switch that we installed in the rack has PoE, all the ports around my house are plugged into that switch in the rack, so no matter where I plug this in my house, I've got four extra ethernet ports. So I'm actually buzzing about this, I might velcro it to the back of my computer because it is so small, but if I take out this ethernet cable which is patched up into the rack in the loft, plug it into here, it should provide PoE power to power the switch, which it is, it's come on, and now I can take this small little patch lead, plug into there, plug into the computer, and now my computer has LAN access and internet access, and I've also got three spare ports for other devices. So the Flex Mini has appeared in Unify. We can go ahead and click on Adopt over here to adopt it. I'm gonna click on this, give it a rename. I'm gonna call it Office Switch. And here, even though this switch is so small, you can clearly see what is plugged in. So we've got port number two and port number one as the uplink of my office computer. And I think this is a yeah, you can actually go ahead and apply VLANs to all of these ports on this tiny little switch, which is insane, really. So it's adopted, and it works fine. <laughs> So I've just finished installing this Nano HD on the roof and now I'm applying one of the skins to it so it doesn't look like a boring old access point. It now looks like a Le Marble finish, which is kind of nice. Uh, that is now being powered by the industrial switch that we have just put on the wall over here. This thing looks the absolute business. Super, super chuffed with it. Uh, it's actually doing a few things, this switch, for me. As you can see, there's two Ethernet ports here. One of them that goes up to the rack, up in the loft and one of them that actually goes back out into the kitchen. So the things in the kitchen actually go to this switch and then up to the rack and then out to the internet. So this is kind of a hop for me. Uh, and this switch with its PoE is also powering a couple of cameras as well as the access point in here. Got this little flex camera right here, which is for my garage. And then there's another camera on the outside of this wall that it's powering for my garden. <laughs> Okay, so it's a few days later. As you can see, I've got the GoPro strapped to my chest. It's time to end this video by putting this monstrous AP 
on my roof. Now this is called the Base Station XG from Ubiquiti, and this is actually a little bit overkill. It's completely designed for things like stadiums, football stadiums, densely packed areas. This is an absolute beast of a radio that can have up to 1,500 clients connected to it at once. So what I'm going to do is I live on a brand new estate where houses are being built right now. So I'm going to provide with this some free Wi-Fi for people to connect to because obviously people might not have got their broadband moved over to their new house yet. So let's get the ladders out and install this on the roof. Just quickly looking around this access point, you can see that there's a screen on here. I think this is going to display things like how many people are connected, the current IP address, so on and so forth. We've got a one gig port over here. And then because this access point can support so many clients, we've actually got a 10 gig port on this side, which is pretty insane. Two. Okay, yeah, do that then. Right, we're clear to go up. Okay, going up now. Cliff for launch. Okay, so this is the access point that was already here that I'm going to replace. This is one of Ubiquiti's outdoor access points. It's a pretty good access point. What we're doing right now with this one is uh, definitely overkill. So I'm gonna take this one off and then put this one on. Look at this, there's a little spider hiding in here. I'm not a fan of spiders, but he's pretty cute. And now I wonder if underneath our little screen is on. Yeah, it's on. Look, it says Unify SDN and it's picked up an IP address, 192.168.55.76. Looks the business. I mean, it should do for one and a half thousand pounds. I hope that I'm gonna get signal all the way down there. Okay, so guys, what a video this has been and what a nice calm day to end it on. We've got the base station XG on the roof. What I wanna do is walk all the way down this road and see how far we can push it, see how far I can stay connected. So follow me. Okay, so you can see at the moment, I've actually got two out of three bars and we're quite close to the house. What I'm expecting to happen is as we get a little bit further away, this should jump to three bars and then go down. I think we're a little bit too close for what's going on with this access point because it's a beast. Literally, just as I said that, <laughs> it goes to three and we're walking away from the house. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and we'll do a speed test. Okay, so nine ping and okay, we're maxing out at about 100 megabits a second and uh, yeah, we're pretty close to the house. I think we can keep going. Okay, so I've got one bar to the access point. I physically can't see it. Oh, it's just jumped to two. I physically can't see my house. There's a physical house in between us and my house and we're about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven houses away from my house, which is pretty mental. So let's see if we can do a speed test. If this even gets a result, it's getting 70 meg and I'm eight houses away at least. That's unreal. So what a place to end this video on. Literally 100 meg of Wi-Fi, eight houses away from my house. If that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. If you guys have got any questions, the comment section is the place. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit us up with a like rating because it helps more than you would think. But for now, my name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.